Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Beyer. Happy Easter Monday for those Happy celebrating. <laughs> Easter Monday. Happy Passover. Uh, I think I, I read- Ramadan the, was happening during it this same Yeah, I, I, I saw a tweet yeah. that it was the three Abrahamic, uh, you know- For the first holiday. time in 30 years or something. Yeah. I barely so. remember the first one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too so <laughs> i i yeah i would have to look at pictures of that one yeah i don't okay. i don't remember that one specifically but yes yes okay. we are here to discuss everything that happened over the last week this is this and that so if you are new here please subscribe below you know what everyone's going to ask us to talk about it we got to talk about it it was it's trending on twitter horribly so um for Evgen Evgeny Semenenko, but that was a really, really horrible, horrible fall. Uh, yeah, it's scary the looking. Plushenka show this weekend that was horrible. Um, and we've seen horrible falls, and this, for me, unfortunately, ranks among the worst I've seen. Well, yeah. it's so interesting that this comes right after the World Championships when Ashley Kane fell. And then, you know, there was so much speculation about why didn't she get up or try or, you know, how bad is the concussion and multiple, and, and unfortunately we have actual visual evidence of what happens when someone has a bad concussion and gets up. And he oh God, it gives me the heebie-jeebies even just like thinking about it. Yeah, it's it was so upsetting because he, the video is so clear from like the, the crowd angle. It was not like the televised angle. And he went down on such a hard angle, popped up. And at first I didn't understand the, the tweet that was sent to me, I think was in Georgian. So I didn't, I wasn't understanding what I was watching. And then I saw him fall and then he got up and fell again. And then I was like, wait, am I watching like a shtick? Is this like a, is he being silly? And then I rewatched it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is, uh, an absolute nightmare scenario for him to have gotten up and then fallen again. I mean, I've fallen and then clogged my head on the ice. I've never, you know, like, that is tough. So tough. Yeah. And obviously, I mean, they're saying he's fine because, you know, no one wants to be sued or anything, you know, for the audience, but he's obviously has a concussion. And I think I read some brain bleeds, obviously, uh, you know, you hope he's okay. You hope he of course. can skate again, yeah. you know, in time. Yeah. But that's something that will keep him off the ice. I mean, should and, keep him off the ice, yeah. And you don't know necessarily yeah. when we read certain articles, as we've mentioned, sometimes they comically translate when they call them rentals or cascades or things like that. But in the Mishan commentary from it, he did refer to it as a fatal accident. But I mean, I think it just means like a grave accident. Yeah. Like it was a serious accident, but they were also quick to not blame the ice. Mm -hmm. They were, I mean, already the legalese was in motion that like yeah. the ice was fine and the lights were fine. It was in Could fact- Could you imagine if it happened in the US, there would be lawyers all over that. Lined up to get, because again, the rule in US law is sue anybody you can. That's involved. I mean, we've yeah. heard about that in ice shows in the past, or there are rumors that people got out of contracts in that way because of things that happened with lighting and things like that. And who really knows? But uh, those. Well, I'm sorry know, for this segue, but is was this the same show that Medvedev was skating the new Carmen at? You know, I don't think. I think the. I think Evgenia skated that in the Tarasova show and she might have did. Okay, Netflix. understood. And I only brought it up because when we watched Medvedeva skating, it was enough to give, that light show was enough to give someone an epileptic seizure while watching it. I don't know how anyone could see the skating. It was such a blur of like flashing lights and spotlights and darkness. And Real Danny G special? Yeah, exactly. More is more. It's if Rococo had like a moment on the ice, it would be that. <laughs> like it's so busy and fluttered. But okay, yeah, I, he... I don't, I don't know what you made of it all. I, I think as far as Semenenko went, I was just thinking a lot about. Remember that time that Yuzu got hurt and skated a, I think it was Cup of China. Cup of China. Bandage. Yeah, and you just think about how much we've learned about concussions since then, right? Right. In terms of safety for athletes. Right. And, so that's, and, right. and we've seen careers derailed because of concussions. hundred uh, percent. Joshua Ferris. Yeah. 
Fortunately slash unfortunately, I've not had to watch many of them on film. We hear when these things happen, it is often in training, but to see it, mm -hmm. oof, it it's upsetting. It's very Remember upsetting. Papadakis had a concussion, uh, missed most of the season. Uh, I forgot what you were. A couple, it's no uh, joke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before 2017, I believe. Yeah, so, I mean, these are really serious uh, things that, you know, have happened. And, and again, we know what happens to just the joint space to the force in which you land a quadruple yeah. attempt. Now to have had that happen on a quadruple jump, it's very scary. Yeah, and then you always have to worry, worry about after an accident like that coming back too early, repeated concussions. I mean, it's no joke. Um, and the PTSD it. involved with that. I'm so, I mean, it would, I'd be jittery the next time I went to try a quad, you bet. Um, you know, not from a country that's most in tune with mental health, but yes, uh, right. that is- Or real. wanting to show oh. vulnerability or, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's a real, a real factor here and uh, wishing him the best and uh, you know, hopefully he forgets it. <laughs> you know, you I mean, you just hope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, hopefully it was such a blur that, yeah, it's just gone. I mean, horrible though, that that clip will live on the internet in infamy for ever. Really you know, upsetting. Yeah. Really upsetting. And not that it necessarily was shown, but I mean, I think people should understand the dangers of skating. I mean, on one hand, you know, that's, very very real um because you know for a while back on youtube they used to put up those and maybe they're still there those clips of like pair skating is dangerous and they would just show like scary fall oh after yes scary fall and i would think who is watching this now i will always show like a cocktail <laughs> party of people midori ito jumping out of the ring because that's like mm -hmm. cute no one was really hurt but like those sorts of clips i am not interested in at all you so know there are a lot of youtube clips at least there were in the early days of YouTube about, you know, accidents. And um, I think even in gymnastics, they always were the montages of the great crashes. And at the end, the guy runs into the horse. There was, you know, a famous one. But, yeah. you know, I think that we think so differently about trauma and about right. these situations that those things hopefully wouldn't be made yeah. in the same way anymore. But, right. yeah, I mean, it's a great way if you want to get a bunch of views you know i mean unfortunately people do watch it's like when you go past a train wreck and you can't look away but right yeah it's just really horrible it's scary the best uh, i'm trying not to make a speaking of train wrecks transition right now oh <laughs> um so the midvita mccarman with a fan um i have to say were you a fan <laughs> of the music for her and her personality or the program? Those are the two different things. Those are two very different things. When you said to me, oh, let's let's watch the Medvedeva Carmen program, I thought, oh, well, you know, she could probably do this. I think she, remember she wanted to be, the story goes that she wanted to be Carmen and they picked it for Zagutova when she switched to Orser because that was the music that she really wanted to skate to. I think it was the right piece of music for her to perform to with the wrong the, choreographer. Yeah, it, well, two and things. A fan. In, the, in the opera, there are two women and there's Michaela, who's like this much more as a Gitava type and Carmen, which I think is much more of Medvedeva type is how it hmm. Yeah, if they were doing Carmen on ice, for instance. <laughs> with like Sandra in The Legend Bessie. of Love, there's like the evil queen and there's... <laughs> So, Midvita yeah. is what I'm more interested in. That's yeah, Zagitiva is more of a Michaela. There is no question. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah. Um, Danny G. Um, no, no improvement there. You know, no program there. I was sort of like, okay, she has the fan. I'm not a, a, a huge fan of prop, you know, skating. But I thought, oh, okay, she could, she could do this. But very little was done. You know, ironically, it's not even that much of an effort was made. And as we talk about a camp that was very interested in counting quads and results, then when you're left with professional skating, I'm not necessarily sure what qualities we're left with. If you've you taken a remember in pro skating as it went on and skaters became longer in the tooth or <laughs> more in need of 28 day stays in places, 
why did the props always come out then? You know, <laughs> you know why, you know why they came out then. <laughs> props were rarely additive to the program. Right. Rarely. Right. There right. were cases, there are some skaters who use props very well, Torval and Dean and their hat and the whole deal, but they were often gimmicky and horrible, right? Do you yeah. remember? Nine times out of 10, I, it's, I want to leave the room when that one comes on, <laughs> whatever it is. The prop is a sign. And as we've seen with Zagitova and with Medvedeva, there's diminished ability there. That's why yeah. you're seeing. When, when that particular ability was the driving force behind their results. So when you take that away, I'm just not sure what we're left with. For instance, the Satoko, as we've mentioned, as she has retired now, she can go out and I will just watch her do step sequences, some footwork, some spins all day. No jumping necessary for me to enjoy that program. This, I can't say the same. There was one attempt at a triple sow, which went down. Well, you know, her back is not what it was. And that's yeah. Yeah. really unfortunate, as she herself has said. And I think it's a real look at the cost of the sport. And oh my God, wait, we need to stop what we're doing. Stop what we're doing. We forgot about one thing and we were even talking about what we were going to- Oh, I was like, oh, like a scandal has stopped the recording? No, we're going to do it on air. Here it comes. What is it, Dave? The Frank Carroll interview on Paulina's podcast. Oh, it was going to be my moment of the week. <laughs> I mean, when you've just lost any ability to have a filter. And you know, the things that we love most about Frank, he doesn't know anyone's name. Right. He nor, has that nor kind of, he argues, does he have to right now? No. Yeah. He has that yeah. kind of... He, he has a way of like reinforcing all of like the awful stereotypes about skating, about how important looks are when he's like, you know, that boy from Arizona who did well at the, he's a very handsome boy with a very nice line and, and know, very nice yeah. costume. Yes. And everyone was a good boy or a good girl, you know. He's I, a very good boy. Yes. Yeah. Um, he should have been placed higher. Agreed. And then you hear Paulina finally go, Camden? <laughs> Are you Paulina doesn't about know enough about the history yet. Like she'll learn, she's getting much better. But I was like, oh my God. And then, and then it's so funny because skating scores like tweeted, he didn't call Evan the most talented. But I think that we knew that Evan is not the most naturally talented. I mean, Jenny And said Frank has been open about it. Frank has always been open that the one that got him the gold medal was not the most talented. Yeah. yeah. And I think, remember, like they even had to move his second triple axle because at one point they, uh, had said just that um, it was not uh, in the right place for the camera and so on and so forth. Uh, so that is. I, again, I always talk about this book because we read it in, in classical music called Talent is Overrated. Yes. And, and, and Evan and, and many skaters who have achieved those lofty, you know, achievements yeah. do it in spite of, of their talent, but because of their work ethic and their passion. Yes. And they also, someone said he didn't list Danny Kwan as one of the easiest parents. Well, correct. 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 <laughs> he did not. Yeah. Although he also supported his daughter and got her very far. So there's right. less. But I thought, okay, the funniest moment is that he didn't know the word doping, right? Right. And I was peeing myself when you hear Frank Carroll B. And then that girl at the Olympics. Did he say drugging? She's a drug person. She was revealed to be a drug person. I mean, cackling, you know, yeah. I just yeah. thought, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. And then as it continued, uh, he had a, a few other golden lines. I mean, he was right about- um, Everything. Everything. But when he was talking about the Russian ladies, I thought, I agree. And you, I don't think you can say that. That is. We, uh, we use different terms when we've been talking about what people like to see apparently in the Russians is that grit, is that determination and that effort. And he's saying in his own way with some different choice words that it's not something that looks beautiful and that you want to watch. It, when you it looks heard concerning. Frank Carroll say that they looked like cadavers and that if they raise the age, he doesn't know what's going to happen to those poor girls. He's right. Yeah. 
But you know, you know those were followed- Frank's words. <laughs> the us, please let the record show. It's like when we've had guests on, we're like, whoa, that was them. That was them. Uh, but I think underneath it all was not just a snarky. It was a love for skating. Talking. And it, it was, was a, a love for skating. Oh. And he said at the end, he was like, listen, if you want to count quads and to you, that's what excites you about the sport. Like, okay, then you're happy with what it is. He's like, I'm, I'm someone that came from the art side. And I identified with that. If I didn't follow skating, I wouldn't be following other sports. I come from theater, dance, opera, music, all that sort of stuff. So I was like, yes, you're hitting the nail on the head for my sect of fans that come to this sport, viewing it more as art and performance. And then we're like, okay, great. I love great technical content, but not at the the cost of of beauty in it. So I, I felt he very eloquently stated that at the end. Yes, he didn't know Brian Orser's name, which was- The boy from the- Canada. The boy from Canada. The boy oh, from moment. Canada. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And it was interesting because he was talking about those early entourages. Not that it was bad to have an entourage sort of that you worked and trained with, but he was like, do you need that at a competition? And of course, that's something we see more and more now with certain camps. There is an entourage sitting in the kiss and cry with some. And you're like, is that necessary? And do you understand the hierarchy? And do you feel the support you need? It was so specific that he caters to the individual in front of him. And that's another point we've been talking about certain camps is that they get formulaic and the individual is plugged into their system as where Frank was talking about making adaptations for Linda versus Chris versus Michelle versus Evan versus Dennis, you know, that he he was constantly adapting. Yeah. You know, method. And then, yeah, I do think it's funny. I do laugh every time Paulina brings up consultant coaching because Frank is known for being the head honcho of that and not really I mean skaters go to him as the consultant he's not known for sending them out as much unless it's for choreography but I was yes except (laughs) Evelyn Kramer he was like I would go have them fix spins for a week and come back but and he was referring to Bobby Shire on the east coast but yeah and then um he was talking about Annie who does Annie's Edges in Canada but yes it was um it was very amusing. Nonetheless, it yeah. was a great interview, well worth a listen or two. I mean, you just need to hear that snobby Massachusetts accent come out. <laughs> and he really is writing a book, I confirmed with Ann Jensen. But yes, that was Good. that was better than all of Junior Worlds, just to hear him talk about. And then Agreed. she became then she became a drug person. Oh, before the competition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting, though, is at the core, at the center of it, is a real passion for the sport. It's not just some jaded, bitter interview where they're given gems of quotes, like we read in certain articles. Like, this was someone who truly loved his craft. And you know? a really well-done crossfoot spin. I mean, he was very passionate about that crossfoot spin there. Yeah. <laughs> I, no. Yes, Frank. Yes. Okay. We Please agree. Fight. Keep talking. All right. Yeah. Pauline, don't cut him off. All right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh my God. I loved it. And people will say, where do I find this interview? Because you can't search in iTunes and go, Frank Carroll. It's too hard. It's too right. hard. People always go, or Paulina. Where do I find that video? And I'm like, Google, you you can't. How come I where do I find that when we talk about the Vincent Zoe? ESPN article. Do you know how many people leave comments? Where can I find the Vincent Joe ESPN article? Jonathan, how hard is it to go Google? It's as if you just put together those search terms. Vincent Joe ESPN. (laughs) Dave, you know that's how I found you. I was, uh, back in the day, I googled Frank Carroll interviews. And then bam, yours came up. And that's how I discovered the skating. I was in a blue shirt with a matching tie. Yep. During my early paralegal career as a woman. The, and he, the, he, he came to you live from his bedroom where he was talking about how clearly Dennis Ten must have miraculously learned better skating skills overnight because they were such different scores in the long program at that world. So I remember being like, this is my kind of interview. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. It was great. I, I remember I wasn't sure if he was going to be politically correct or not about that situation, you get people, sometimes you ask them a specific question and they will just answer it. Right, and And he did. Probably in a way I think he considers politically correct. 
Yes, but it was honest and accurate. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes, the IJS has been completely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when he was talking about, he was obviously talking about Trusova in the last group getting the, those scores for components when they're atrocious. Right. I don't enjoy atrocious skating, do you? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> exactly. The way he would question it back to her. And she was like, right. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Funny. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, get, going to Junior Worlds and. Well, actually, or transitioning because we had another interview with a coach, oh, which yes. compare and contrast that now to Raphael's interview. You know, I enjoy a Raphael interview in a different way our, than a Frank Carroll. It's artistic interview. impression more than its technical merit. Correct. <laughs> There's always an agenda. Mm hmm. And I enjoy the bluster and bullshit of Raphael. And sometimes, I mean, he has good points and he does, but there's also, there's like ego, not that there's not ego in Frank's interview, but there's, right. it, you just have to let you, it has to wash over you with Raphael. Like you have to be sitting there man spreading, like you're in the kiss and cry, ignoring Mariah Bell, but there for your boys <laughs> with quads and just let it like come over you. Yeah. I, he thinks the Russians should be back. Yes. And then pointed out that many had Ural, is how he was wording it, um, heritage that were still on the podium at Junior Worlds, despite them representing other countries. You know, Russians love to talk about ethnicity. I don't, <laughs> more than any other, maybe it's just more noticeable because they're talking about different things than we talk about in the US, but they are obsessed with this Ural mountain blood. I mean, they. Talk about it a lot. Okay. As, as an Armenian, it intrigues me for him. <laughs> yeah. I, I just remember my first coach talking about one skater having that Ural mountain blood. And I was like, their blood divides two continents? What are you referring to? <laughs> and then other coaches saying things that we can't repeat here. But right. yes. Uh, <laughs> But if you well, Google Raphael an interview, you will find it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he has a point when the Georgian pair coached, you know, in the Terry School of Skating is at the world champion. And Pavel is there and then Ormanov is putting on, you know, his skater and you're just sort of like, I'm not, I'm not really understanding, I guess, the rule. Yeah. I, it's I, I don't understand. It's yeah. awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah, because surely Alexei Ormanov is a part of the Russian Federation, is a member of the Russian Federation. It certainly was in 1994. <laughs> and maybe even back when he was, you know, teaching um, Yulia Libnitskaya or something. <laughs> was then as well, yes. Yeah. Now he is for the Kazakh Federation. It's very different, Jonathan. Okay. I guess, I guess. So. All right. Oh, man. It's, it is a tough one when the Georgian skaters are all from Russia, then they're here, but it's such a big deal for Georgia because they haven't had- How do you draw that? Before. How do you draw that line? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really dicey. It's, um, yeah. It, it, it gives a weird taste in your mouth when you watch them win. And then you're like, is this really the right thing for what we're doing? By them and not others. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't understand. Why Maurice could go to Worlds, not bring his coach, but then the Georgian pair could go to Worlds and bring their Russian coach. And so you, again, have you ever seen such a symbol of Team Tuberidza scoring bullshit, bad choreography, slapped together, questionable technique, then Morisi, the man mm. who was a toe sal cow and a toe sal. Yes. Yeah. Right. And the Frank Sinatra, where he doesn't even end with my way and the whole deal. I mean, the, just. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like the symbol of Team Tuguritza for, yeah. uh, to me. I just, I yeah. can't, just in yeah. all the, what we love about them, right? And what we. And also, uh, in reading a bit more about the Tuguritza stuff, we had the Kostanaya interview come out this week. Yes. Where she with, was talking about the differences between working with the camp with uh, of Buyanova versus Ateri. And she was like, the biggest difference here is people talk to you and explain things. And I thought, well, maybe that is a difference, I guess. 
Then Guyana was not officially accepting her as a student until May and... Yeah, see, like a trial run, right? To see where- She's had many going. probationary periods and trial runs. This this poor girl, I, I- Yeah. But at this point, who knows what any of their options are? I think the biggest news is situations that ICE Age is, is canceled uh, or not yet scheduled for fall and that Averbuch has moved into coaching ice dance. So mm. if there's no- so if there's no Ice Age, that means that they have lost sponsorship money. That's how TV shows get put on the air. So you do have to wonder about how much money and how the you know financial impact that people like Midvidova and Zagitova and how that you know trickles down to other skaters and what they'll be doing. Well, will you good and will he move into coaching? I mean, it'll be really interesting to see, especially the longer uh, the situation mm. um, in Ukraine goes on for. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it's, um, it's interesting and I don't, and I don't know what I feel for the Russian skaters. I, um, because they've also benefited from ill-gotten wins for a long time from judges and doping and all sorts of things. So it's hard to, on one hand, I feel that they, I feel for their lost opportunity, but then you have to wonder how they earn it. It's tough. It's a, yeah. it's a no win. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So, because in many ways it doesn't fall to the athletes, but also all those benefits did fall to the athletes. Yeah. So it's tricky. Yeah. It's a tricky one. So anyway, junior worlds, um, I Meanwhile, in Estonia. Yeah. Estonia, <laughs> it was a very interesting competition to watch. Um, let's start with the junior, um, is it still the junior ladies? I know it's the senior women. Is it the junior women? Um, now, according to skating scores, which I'm on, it says junior women. Okay. Let's, let's see what the ISU results page said. Um, I want to be correct. I'm... Yeah, because of course it is women, but then you are, it says junior women. All right, junior women. Yeah, junior okay. women. Here we go. I hadn't thought about it until I was about to say. I uttered it on the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. This was a little bit of um, a debated win. Isabeau Levito uh, certainly thought by many to be the favorite coming in. Uh, Jaya Shin, Jaya Shin uh, second. I thought, look, they were all close in the top four. They were they really all were. I don't think that this caller was the most stringent, Jonathan, in terms of junk. I I agree with you. Yes. Based on that, I would have had the results differently, but I do think that the caller was even. Um, like he didn't like just not call the rotations on one skater. Like it was. And that changes everything. If we just have a lenient caller, but it's lenient for everyone, we're talking about something a little bit different than a selectively lenient caller. Yes. But, but I agree with you. Something I, now I was under the impression it was Josh in, but so I, I look forward to I'm the sure we will... of, yeah, of yeah. comments below. Cause we got, you know, I went back to saying hi Lynn instead of hey, hey, hey Lynn. H well, sometimes it gets in your head because people, when people start um, trying to explain how to pronounce it, it can get very confusing. And then I can just- That's why head. we have the international phonetic alphabet. And if people could just use it, then it's like sort of streamlined for all the languages. But I think it's Hay and Lee. But she also competed this weekend at that, that tree glove trophy. I was like, you guys are crazy, that federation. I can't believe that she was competing again. But um, in any case, I thought- Ms. Shin, Jia, uh, we're gonna learn. Uh, what I love about her is she's giving you such clean jumps, you don't have to wonder. I was mm -hmm. wondering a lot on she some of the other- the cleanest things. jumps. Um, yeah, it was sort of no question. And she was giving you beautiful, just freestyle skating projection and edges. I just, where I feel like Lindsay was delivering some technical content and maybe doesn't connect with the audience the same way. And then someone like Isabeau is just one beautiful picture after another, but her 
jumps in general and takeoffs and sort of curvy landings make me anxious for her future and the performance. But she, just a delight to watch, right? There's Amazing, just, um, yeah. But Jaws sort of gave us the best of both, I felt like she- I worry about Isabeau because you know, she just won Junior Worlds. Everyone is going to anoint her the next, right. the next, right? Which as they practically just, just senior nationals, yeah. As we're just watching Alyssa Liu retire last week, right? So it's really hard to not draw the parallels and already right. everyone is moving on and, you know, Isabeau, Isabeau, Isabeau. And I, I am very worried about her back on the combinations developing into an terry like back injury as we continue, as we saw with Medvedeva, as we see with so many of the other girls who rotate like that, she right. does crank her lower back on the landings. I mean, Each and, landing I mean, had that also. hook too. It just turned around real quick. And the, the oiler, you know, was, was a particularly... Well, both um, Lindsay and Isabeau have competitive spirits that coaches dream of, right? That yeah. you just cannot teach. And, and again, there is an excitement about Isabeau. You know, Alyssa got a lot of hype for her technical content at the time, but Isabeau is reminding us all of something. It's this nostalgic, gorgeous sort of balletic potential on the ice that we've, I think, not seen in American skating in for ladies in a while. That we've seen of... it in skating in a long time. She has a certain upper body and like limb extension that is yes. really stunning. Yeah, he finishes she, each position with that almost a button. It's amazing. What she doesn't have is speed. And that is worrying because especially as you get taller and older, speed does need to be part of the equation for getting the jumps. Yeah. And she has the ability to spin in the air, but it's not really connected to coming from a lot of speed. And that right. is just concerning in general in terms of jump rotation, what can last and, and whatnot. So, um, She's absolutely mesmerizing. She's absolutely stunning. Uh, but in terms of, you know, long term, I don't have a crystal ball, but we have seen this with, you know, I, the, the takeoff worries me on the triple triple. Just yeah, for, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, as, I mean, I can certainly see why judges put her first. Uh, I did think that some of the jumps in replay did not look uh, around. And I've not seen Josh in, in person. So I don't know, is is there a bigger presence from Isabel? I mean, to me- Isabel I, has I presence. Watched. I mean, she yeah. has- But so does Josh in. Like, she I I, I really yeah. think she, she was quite effervescent and kind of joyous out there, had great musical choices, clean, like no brainer jumps. I don't know, I was a big fan. And she did win the free, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I might've had her first in the short too. Yeah, I don't know. But I thought Isabeau Lindsay, is stunning. Yeah, I thought Lindsay improved, uh, especially over the last couple of months here, especially after she had a really rough skate at nationals to come here. And she didn't have the best outing at uh, the senior international that she did. So I thought that right. she was really impressive here. I thought that she looked a little bit faster. Her spins are always fantastic. And she was emoting more than usual. So that was um, good to see for her. When I didn't know what to think after the short because they gave her the exclamation point, they gave her the cue, you know, all this sort of stuff. But it was nice to see her end up with a medal after the free. Yeah, and she's a it looked like it might not happen. Yeah. She's a very quiet fighter, you could tell, uh, yeah. when she's out there. So, and I do think that she, one thing that Lindsay really has, in spades is extension. Now, when you're next to Isabeau, who looks like a ballerina slash doll as she's performing, it's a little hard to, you know, think of Lindsay in that way. But if you really look at Lindsay's jump landings and you look at the extension of her free leg and the pointed toe, I mean, it's very correct and it's very nice. Mm. Uh, mm. She has, and she really has phenomenal spins as obviously Isabeau has incredible spins, but Lindsay is no slouch in the spinning uh, arena either. So I thought that they both uh, were good. I did think that Asun was also really strong. I think the yeah. top were, she was one I wondered if she might be a little slow in person, not seeing her, but again, she was hitting very lovely positions, some really nice- I don't think any of the top four were in danger of being called fast, okay. but uh, <laughs> um, okay. this is junior. So- Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. 
but but a lovely watch. It was Claire from the United States also had some lovely qualities and she sort of has, she skates with her core. Like I feel mm. like she does generate speed in a nice way, but those are more jumps that I think under another collar, she would have gotten buried alive. Like I think the similarities to Karen Chen are I everywhere. I know, I know. It's I, even I thought that the way she just was moving over the ice, and then when I saw the jump landings, I was like, oh, unfortunately, that part too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like an unfortunate comparison. And the Tammy and the oh man, yeah, it's, yeah. But you know, was she she ended up top five. I don't believe she, she was. Just... I believe she moved from Korea to the U.S. a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Unless I'm talking about the wrong skater but um i believe i don't i don't believe she was raised in the tammy okay. school um okay i think it's just a coincidence but yeah um, lovely skating skills like karen mm -hmm. chen that really nice uh overall flow over the ice but it's yeah the landings yeah yes and it really is you know the rotation on the way up likely right you know, causing that so yeah but overall how about Mr. Ilya Molinin? So this has been really interesting to watch his trajectory over the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. It's as though we are watching, I feel like the button, the maturation of a young man, but okay. We are seeing, we saw him, people thought he, you know, people were very protective of Jason before the Olympics. He is the fan favorite, the Paul Wiley of his day. Because that's how fan works. You can't like everyone. You have to hate someone in order to protect the one you like. Not it's hate, easy. but no, unfortunately, some fandom seems to operate that way. But when he, people were not maybe thinking in reality about how things work or how Olympic teams get named in terms of criteria and the fact that if you win Skate America, the USOC is going to push for you to go, right? Especially if you get the spot at Nemohorn. Vincent was more of a lock than people right, wanted to let him, um, even though he did not have a great free skate at Nationals by any means. You know, Jason was more potentially at risk. Then it comes down to, you know, track record for Ilya, right? We then do see him go out there at Senior Worlds with the potential for a medal, and he did bomb the free after a great short and then we saw here i mean the pressure was really on and he really delivered i mean he has gained quite a bit of experience in the last because isn't it funny i don't know that i i think of his senior world's debut as a bomb because i think he did the free. in the short but the then i think he possible. started the free pretty well right. but then i think one fluke fall like it, it wasn't sort of like a mental implosion, I felt. I felt it was one mistake that then unfortunately rattled him and he was he didn't have the time to regroup. But I felt that again was the learning experience we want yes. to see for someone like this to just now compete, work it out, work out the jitters because we know he knows how to videotape himself practicing. Now it's like, let's just see you do it in competition. Yeah. Well, we have seen him deliver at big competitions. Maybe the pressure wasn't on him like it was other skaters at nationals, but there was pressure on him and he did go out there and deliver. And we have seen him at other competitions go out, you know, the short program at the Senior Worlds. We saw him, you know, at another senior debut, but he really, um, he really rose to the occasion here and really. Yeah fought through pressure. Although I was, so I would always think it's confusing. You know, every coach we've talked to has always talked about the consistency of training a program. And mm -hmm. it, it's got to be difficult for these, these athletes competing in both junior and senior in one season. You know, sometimes he can do quads in the short, sometimes he can't do quads in the short, you know, always changing it out. Um, so I was intrigued to see how that went. The short was fine. And then you know, I love his quad lots more than anything at Worlds, at Senior Worlds, he gave us two like, yes. like amazing ones. And then I did get a little nervous for him because he landed just a little less than perfect here. And I'm used to seeing him land it pretty perfectly, but nice to see him stay focused and continue it. Obviously, Notice that he no didn't do the arms aloft on the quad sal like he tried to do at the Senior Worlds. And he didn't need to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I thought it was very impressive to see him be after we have seen there's been such focus on him at, yeah i mean his life changed with that performance at nationals his skating right. life at least 100 percent yeah so i thought that that was really impressive obviously they have room to grow artistically uh yeah, yeah. 
but because uh, where are they based? Where do they train Virginia. from every day in Virginia? Because again, you you wish it was kind of like Frank was talking about, like a choreographer that was on call nonstop, not a go send them to someone and get a fancy program and come back, but someone who is around and consistently working. Them. Well, I heard his mother, who doesn't go to competitions because she makes him nervous, is really the um, the more of the skating skills guru there. She apparently. Um, Let's think about that Aladdin program for a second. I don't know that she choreographed that herself. Um, okay. Well, by the by the eighth season, she was doing it. I mean, she probably added something of her own. <laughs> I heard that she has some Nina Petrenko energy in the rink. We, you know, it. loving that. You know, she's that would um, track with her explosive technique. I loved her <laughs> jumping back in the day. Oh my gosh! Like I know the rocketeer. He jumps, he jumps like the father, not like the mother. But the, he does have the yeah. long legs like the dad did. So that's yeah. part of that in that okay. way so if you go watch Roman Skorniakov you know you can tell that they're built very very similarly um but interesting is that Raphael was there for his kiss and cry moment for this Raphael not at senior worlds because he was tired but at junior worlds when, when he had the yeah yeah he loves Estonia in the spring Yeah, but people can just talk out their comments below about that one. I, yeah, it tells you how he feels. Yeah. Well, I also thought he didn't really have Mariah Bell's back as much as you would have liked for a coach when she wasn't chosen for the team event. Right. Yeah, he kind of threw his arms up and was like, well, I guess you needed to be better. So... You'd hope that your coach would be like, you know, I think she really proved herself at nationals. And yeah. Unless you didn't think she was going to do it at the team event. If you had doubts as a coach, maybe you didn't want to stick your neck out and say you should use her if you weren't sure that they should. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. exactly. You pay a coach how much money? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. How much an hour? Uh, right? Uh, just oh that was not the first time we've seen that from that camp so that's just yeah. why it was concerned yeah. um yeah 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 um, but he was there with steven it was interesting steven who i think has grown 10 feet since the last yes. time we saw him i was like oh my gosh like yes. this 10 foot tall blonde man is now on the ice and it was interesting in that interview with Raphael where he said, you know, Stephen being here was the win. Mm -hmm. So, so even though, you know, this was a fifth place finish and once upon a time he was touted as the next everything, um, it was nice to see him be able to come back from his ailments and with a respectable skate. Yeah, because he was yeah. originally at the, remember he did so well at the Challenger uh, mm -hmm. this year before... Mm -hmm. I think COVID at nationals and then, you know, come here. Right. So, and then I thought it really interesting to look at um, the training, think about the training dynamic between Wesley Chu and Liam Kapekis, that they're two very close uh, skaters in ability training together. Uh, uh, Liam from Washington, but, you know, training uh, with Keegan Murphy. And I thought that they both, you know, were great in the short program here. I really like something about Liam Kapekis skating. He has a throwback quality to him as well. Jenny mm -hmm. said that he, remi he reminds her of uh, Todd Eldridge a bit. And mm, okay. I don't know, I find him very pleasant. He was really great at nationals. And, and think, Liam tired going back to back, you know? Yeah. Because I think both skaters have a like, very old fashioned packaging. I think they could. Um, relax it a bit, you know, it, it has almost like the Richard Callahan, like packaging going on. But yeah, I think that they look very well prepared and I thought that they were good here. Obviously though, for these skaters, it's a tremendous amount of pressure at Junior Worlds with medals on the line and people watching live. And, and so a disappointing free for Liam, obviously. I think for Wesley as well. Um, yeah. yeah. But Ermanov's, uh, student from Kazakhstan who was great at four continents really had a moment here. I mean, free, yeah. I mean, his ability to jump is like, no joke. totally blank on his name and did not have a skating oh, score. Mikhail Shyadorov. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
But but again, we talked about him earlier in the season because there's something very special about him, clearly, in the jumping in particular. Um, and it was nice to see him deliver that yeah. that free because the, the short was was less successful. So yeah. Yeah. Well, how about the Browns and Ice Dance? I thought Oh, and they... just before we go, I do like um the Japanese skater Tatsuya yes. Tsuboi. Yeah. Such like those quad sows, like all from his legs, like those triple axes, all from his legs. It was so, it was that like beautiful, like style of jumping I just love to see. So that was also a nice moment for him. But yeah. Okay. Well, how about Meanwhile, ice, dance? ice dance? Yes. I want to ask you about this. Okay. Because I think it's, it's been a while since we've covered like a junior Grand Prix event, for instance. And yeah. The Browns are very interesting to me because again, they are siblings, right? Yes. So here we go. Everyone's got to have the sibling talk. But for me, they found a really nice solution in the free dance where it was both intense and passionate. It just wasn't necessarily inward. Yeah. Uh, but I found it did, I did not find it like with other sibling teams we've mentioned where we sort of lack that fiery quality. I thought, I thought we really had some dynamic moments in that free dance in particular. I was glad because this finally marks the end of the rhythm dance from this season. Yes. No more. It's gone. Thank God. <laughs> but the, the, the free dance, I thought they did some really interesting stuff. I was curious yeah. to get your take. So I'm very curious to watch them. So they've been, uh, you know, skaters of the area for a long time. They're originally uh, with Andrew Laverick and they're with Inessa who worked with Natalia Dubova as her technician. Mm. As all of those head coaches from Russia have the people that do the real right. technical grunt work for them. So interesting that they are working with her and Joel Deere, uh, who was with them here. And I thought that they looked great. And it was interesting because they weren't at nationals, right? They were another COVID case. Right. It's all a blur. <laughs> From I know. I feel like we haven't seen them in like forever, especially because we didn't have the Junior Grand Prix final. Also, like who had COVID and didn't in this year versus last year and this year with the variant and the whole deal. Oh my goodness. Um, it's a blur in January, but uh, in Nashville, I don't believe we saw them there because of that. And I remember sitting there and with the penultimate group at nationals thinking like, this team's with the wrong coach or these ones aren't matched well or this you know this one's not the i think that they are really really special i don't know i think they have great skating skills i thought that i was happened. hoping you were going to say that because i kind of i kind of got that vibe i thought that they really have a lot of potential especially compared to some of the other u.s teams i thought wow they really mm. look to be on a good upward uh, trajectory yeah here. really yeah, i like i, I enjoy them yeah yeah, and I have to. I liked both Canadian teams. Carol Lane's team, I was enjoying. That wasn't the highest ranked Canadian team, but the no. second ranked Canadian team there. Yes, uh, they did a lovely job. The tall people, they were tall. I mean, hello, tall. hello. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> but they're just happy. like Jeffrey Chen. Yes, it, yes. Who I find to be such a beautiful skater. Unfortunately, she fell in the rhythm dance. Um, and they plummeted and were left off the podium despite their second place um, finish in the free dance. Um, he's he's got it. Yeah, I don't know that they've got it together. And it's so dismissive to just say something like that without knowing. But in my opinion, as as you were mentioning, he I don't know how far this partnership goes, but I see the sky the limit for him. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens, especially as Charlie White moves into the coaching arena in Michigan and as things shuffle, you know, what will happen with Spielbahn, who spends so much time with Diana Davis? I mean, what is what is all happening there? I mean, that's going to be something really to watch in the coming seasons. But I do think Jeffrey and Christina are both very good. Um, the one interesting thing is that usually... Igor's camp has had like a guy that has like a tremendous like power and brute strength. Whereas Jeffrey seems to be stronger, like in the skating skills department. The lyricism of his yeah. skating is so amazing. Yeah. He's not the typical Igor male skater is what I was going to say. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that partnership develops and what happens mm. in the future. But 
you know, a really talented skater. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that their free dance great, especially after Kashmar in in the rhythm dance in the fall. Yeah. So yeah, no, no, you know. As all of these junior teams are moving up, it's going to get very interesting over the next year as people retire and move in and out and who's coming back and all of this in ice dance. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Next season. Yeah. And interesting with, on one hand, like it's great that the U.S. had so much success here at Junior Worlds. But... It does have the feeling like, well, if the Russians were here or that there's like the U.S. is the chief beneficiary of Russia not being here. Which is true. Obviously, yeah, I mean, at Worlds, obviously Japan did so well at uh, Worlds, but, you know, the U.S. winning a pair world title and then, you know, dominating junior Worlds in this way. You're like, OK, that's good. But is it? Is it too much? Although that's something that probably other countries never worry about. They never worry about winning too much, Jonathan. You know, right. like, <laughs> you know, yeah. yeah. You just because the the decision. Mm -hmm. hmm, let's see. The decision to not have them compete was not so. The U.S. could another win. country could monopolize. The, the, the but it will is, get spun that way that this is yes, political and this. Yes, it will. I mean, this happened in all sports because of a war. But it will invariably be spun that this happened because so other the Americans could only win these three titles because uh, yeah. Well, or at the least good two. news. I think we'll see the U.S. Um, having more spots in the Junior Grand Prix than they've had in several seasons. So that is great. Um, but yeah, it did it did make me like a little nervous, like, oh. But then again, does Russia ever worry about winning too much, Jonathan? Ever, ever. Or okay. would Japan or, you know, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. But um, just, you know how this is. Going. I hear you. <laughs> I, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> well, to even it out, we did not meddle in pairs because we almost did, but we did not. And that team is lovely, but they had a really rough uh, outing. Dave, Dave, do you, I don't mean to put you on the spot, uh, so I'll just say it. Their short program music was everyone's favorite selection for a junior world championships, which is the hooker musical Sweet Charity uh, I don't just pop my cork for any guy I just meet. Come spend a little time with me, big spender, as a girl under seven, uh, 18 years old was skating to it. I just thought, who is doing this? What? What? This is a part. This is pointing out the hookers and skating. I just. What? <laughs> Stop putting them in there. Stop. At the junior level, no less. I mean, I know that they're on the older side, but she's still 17 years old. I don't want to see her skating to Sweet Charity, only to be followed by Je suis Malade about, oh my gosh, I can't even smoke anymore now that you've left me and I feel like an abandoned orphan. Like, what a terrible song selection on both fronts. But they were very talented despite their rough skate in the free. <laughs> Gorgeous lines and from yeah. Minnesota, which we love. So Ooh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, and and the Georgian pair who we've seen a million times. Why are all of the Georgian skaters performing in gray? Mm, it's true. Yeah. And their short program is almost like the exact midvidge of a bluish gray, except mm. they put their sparkles horizontal instead of vertical. But it's like the same, mm. same cut. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, they got their world title. You know, they felt like, I think they thought they deserved a medal at Senior World. Yeah. Well, it was close there, but yeah. Yeah. So what was your moment of the week, Jonathan? Oh, my hands down, the Frank Carroll interview. You sent it and I was, I was on my walk. I do, I do the walk around the reservoir. Um, in Central Park. And I was like laughing aloud. I was like, clap. I was like, yes, Frank, yes. Like just by myself listening on the headphones. Drug person. I, you, you know, those skaters are looking cadaverous. I was like, oh my gosh. And he was like, who? Who from the symphony and the opera would want to see this kind of skating? And I was like, thank I you. <laughs> I hope you think like he can't possibly. Is is he self-aware enough to like, if he did the audio book, would it have the same inflection? I don't know that he would give like the performance that Dick Button it would better. give. It better, it better. <laughs> no. You know what I think would be better? Because obviously he likely has a ghostwriter, right? Who's interviewing him. 
just release the audio tapes. Just <laughs> release the audio <laughs> <laughs> and you know what you charge job charge for i'll buy it i'll buy it yeah oh my god i could listen to him talking about what happened with maribel in the rink and like all those things come on yeah that's what you want to know right when he was talking about like what fork to use at dinner parties oh, she was yeah. really an all-around sort of instructor that way and that was based on the question how do you model yourself as a coach after Maribel versus not after Maribel. And he was like, well, you know, she knew how to set a table and knew what, you know, what piece of silverware you were supposed to use. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> More questions about Maribel, like by the minute, right? Incredible, right? I didn't realize she was also, I didn't realize Tab Hunter was also a skater. Oh, yes. When all of that was coming up too, because I knew- Tab Hunter and Robbie Robertson were an item. Oh, the old spinning queen. The, yes. Queen. Yeah, I can't remember what his title was, the spinning Ronnie or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, how funny. I, yeah, I just thought maybe they would have crossed paths in movies. I didn't realize Tab had actually skated before. Yes. So, mm. The and interview that kept on with Evelyn Kramer. She was friends with all of them. So, okay. Yes. okay. What was your moment of the week? Hearing Frank say drug person, I just <laughs> was like, <laughs> yeah, what's the term? How do you say <laughs> drug person? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he's really been keeping up on things, but just hearing it in that manner was oh. just, oh. God. But it did remind me of, because there wasn't an audio version of Dick's book, was there? Push no. Dick's button? Oh, okay. I was like, whoa, I would have bought that. But he also goes in, he was just as current because he was on about Radionova in that like That's... opening chapter in a similar way. Yeah. Crazy. You call her a fugitive from the worst of the child pageants in Dick's book. <laughs> See, all, all these guys have some, they've all got some analogy for you. Yeah. We need Carlo's book. That's the, the one that we, Kristen's got the manuscript, allegedly. Yes, that's the one. We oh, really yeah, that would be an interesting one. Yeah. yeah. And he'll throw, he still throws Carlo under the bus every time about that 1980 medal and then follows it up with, he was a great guy. Well, you know that, we, okay, so you only competed at adult nationals at Udell, right? Mm. So I had to text Christine Brennan. I said, we're in the room where it happens. I'm thinking of Pat Lipinski and the, what does she call them? The Terra Frenzies on the ice, yeah. running out of the rink in your guards, getting driven to Taco Bell in the minivan. Yeah. With the other mothers. I mean, oh. She we painted were, a picture, that's for sure. Yeah. She really did an epic book. <laughs> oh, that she looks sexy. Oh, man.